Hey, my name's Luke David Robinson, and I'm trading my way up to my dream car. A while ago, I bought a beta of a car for just £180, and I fixed it and flipped it for profit and repeated the process again and again. Will I ever find my way to that dream car of mine? Who knows? But it's sure gonna be fun trying. This is Talksteer, running down a dream. Hey Talksteer, Luke here, how's it going? And welcome back to another video of Pure Talk. Today, still on the 205 GTI. Now, I'm thinking what I need to do in this video is go ahead and actually try and do some just detail into the car, make it look a bit better. So the thing is, I'm waiting for some stuff on the front to happen. So let's just go and grab the camera and quickly show you well, waiting for down there. Well, I'm getting a little bit frustrated with the progress on this car this week because the last few days I've gone to it, tried to unload the stuff and got absolutely nowhere. So yes, I've cleaned up the rear hubs. I mean, they look nice and shiny now, so they look good on the car. Now, the back doesn't need too much doing, but it does need a bolt going in here. So that there is the torsion bar. And there should be a Torx bolt that goes into there. So I need one of them on each side. That thread there doesn't have a bolt, so that's fine. So once that's done, and the handbrake cables are all on the right place and everything. Then that car should be able to come back on its rear wheels, so that's getting close to coming down. Then at the front, we have problems with the brakes because the calipers were half there and the actual brackets that hold the calipers in, the brake pads, they were missing. So I tried to get some other calipers, which I had off my 1.9 GTI, and I cleaned them all up and everything and got them ready and prepped them all. There's the other half of it. Went to stick on the car, turns out the hub's difference with the knucklers, so it's a bigger offset to the 1.6 GTI, so that was a waste of time. <laughs> and then finally, finally, let's grab my torch so you can see. Here we come down to the driver's side of the car. We have the track rod end there, and when I go to tighten that up, no matter what I do, that thing just keeps spinning, so I've ordered a new one of them. Once I get that sorted, the front of the car should be able to come down on its wheels as well. So that brings me on to what we're doing today on the car instead. Because I don't know what you can do with the suspension and the wheels and such, I figured while the car is still semi-naked, it's a good time to actually clean it up before I start sticking all the plastics on it. Because inevitably I'm going to have to polish this car and stick waxes on and everything. It's going to be much easier doing that whilst there's no plastics on the car because once you get them on that, they can turn white and the real paint in the backside. So what I'm going to do, clean all the dust off this and go ahead and see if it needs any polishing or wet sanding and such, which I know some panels do. So I'm going to clean this inside the garage. So I've got my buckets of water here, a few microfiber cloths. The products I'm using is this one here, Optimum No Rinse, which is a really good rinseless wash. So if you have ever need a product that's really versatile, I highly, highly recommend this. I've loved this product this year. It's one of the best products I have found. And it's great for cleaning them in environments such as this garage where, let's be honest, you can't really get the car too wet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a panel by panel, get as much dust off as I can, and then go ahead and maybe clay bar the car and then polish it and see if anything needs wet sanding as well. As I work on this car, I'm also gonna talk about this Optimum Novins product I'm using. Now, this is not a sponsored product. I bought it with my own money, so I just like the product that much. I thought I'd tell you all about it. So the idea is you only need a little tiny bit of water. So I've only got about three and a half liters in this bucket. And I'm just gonna get my microfiber cloth and I'm gonna fold into quarters. And it's literally a case of this. If I fold it to quarters because there's two sides of the cloth, I've got eight surfaces to use. It's literally a case of just swipe it down. Just do a couple like that. Check for debris or dirt, which there is on that now. Flip over to the clean side and like that. Now this product has loads of lubrication in it. It's an amazing product. And uh, it's completely transformed the way that I've been washing my car since last year. It's really made it such an easy, and a joyful process. Now, I'm not gonna say it's as good as doing a full two bucket method when you've got lots and lots of time, but in certain scenarios like winter or indoors like a garage, it's actually really, really useful. And especially if you've got something like a classic car, which you may not wanna to get too wet. This is good because you're not gonna soak the inside of the car or anything else if your seals aren't too good, which would be the case with this car at the moment because there's still holes in the car even though the glass is in it. So as you can see, I'm just, kind of just moving this around. So I'm probably gonna use all the surfaces to do this bonus. There's a lot of dust on this car. So there we go, just like that. Now I'm gonna put that to one side for now. 
Well, that's done for the day. So I'm just going to leave that on a separate bucket to the side or on the roof window, whatever you want to do. And then once that's done, you're going to get another clean microfiber out of the bucket. Just repeat the process because this car is very dusty. I'm just going to go ahead just on one surface and just give it one quick going over like that just to get anything, anything off. It's just going to need a little bit more pressure, but now the most of the dust is off. You can see this really cleaning up. And you can also see that, yeah, it does need a clay bar. So. Yes, could feel lots and lots of contamination. Let's flip this over to another side. Now, another good thing about ONR, let's show off up some nobins, is that you can use it as anything like a clay lube, a quick detail spray, you can even use it as an air freshener for the car, it's got a bubblegum smell to it. The bottle will last for years. If you got a big bottle like I did, it is relatively expensive, but when you look how much it costs per wash, it is actually very, very economical. Especially when you consider how little water you're gonna be using at the same time. So that is nice and clean now. So all I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna go ahead and give the car a clay bar at the same time. So this is free of any loose debris. Give it a clay bar and then I'm gonna wipe it off with my drying towel and then the bonnet is gonna be good for polishing after that. So another thing I love about ONR in the winter, you can fill up the bucket with warm water. So you use one cap full for three and a half liters and you can fill up with warm water so you keep nice warm hands. So here I'm just taking some Sam's exterior detailer. Doesn't matter what you use, you can actually use ONR as a detailer if you want for um, clay bar. And actually does say it's part of the use of it, but I'm just gonna go ahead now and give this car a clay bar. And let's just see how much comes off. So the car is actually pretty clean. I think it's had a respray. And it's just a case that there's a little bit of, you know, just a little bit of dust from the spray left on the car. So I can actually feel this straight away becoming much, much smoother. So it's gonna be actually clay bar relatively quick. I don't think there's much contamination on the car. Just needs the paint smoothing down a little bit. I'm not too sure how good the paint job is because um, I get the impression it's not the pe best paint job in the world, but I can see some imperfections. The question is how good can we make the paint job with a bit of detailing and a bit of smoothing out? I would really prefer to use my Sam's clay mitt. That was awesome until I left it on top of the radiator. Guess what happened to the clay when it was on the radiator? Accidentally, by the way, but uh, wasn't the best thing, so I need to order a new one of them. If anyone's wondering as well, this is an automatic bonnet on this 205. The GTIs don't have this bonnet. See the way it's raised here and it's got this lump in the middle? Uh, this, well, the normal GTI has a flat bonnet, just like the regular cars, but automatics have this raised bonnet, which is actually quite a desirable upgrade on them. It's a very popular upgrade, so yes, uh, automatic bonnets are quite sought after, so it's a nice thing to have. Uh, I don't know which I prefer in terms of what preference it is. I... I like both in a sense. Maybe I would go for the automatic bonnet out of just preference, although I'd probably go for the original of us after originality, so I don't know. In some ways, the original looks a bit more delicate, which kind of suits the 205's appearance. Awesome, okay, that's done. Let's just go ahead to get ONR cloth. I'm just gonna wipe any dirt that's been exfoliated out of the paint surface, clean it off before I wipe it with my giant towel. I will have a look at how much better this looks than before. Because I've only ever seen this car dusty. It's been locked up for years and then it's came in here, it's got more dusty. So, here we go. Excited to see what our surface is like. So I can still feel that it's not that smooth underneath, so it is gonna need to polish. But it's just a kind of like overspray type of uh, roughness to it, so I think. It's much better than it was. I think as soon as we hit this with a polisher, give a quick compound, it's gonna be fine. I can see this car's never been washed because there is no single swirl mark on the paint, which is actually really nice to see. So we're not gonna be tackling that, which means you might start to get a really good finish by the time we're done.
Right, well, the car's now washed its clay bod, so if you have a look down the side, it's looking relatively good. Still needs a polish, but you can see that's a pretty damn straight car. And uh, same goes when you see the bonnets and such. So it's gonna make a great car when it's done. Even though we've got like, a decent amount of shine here and such, this could be a lot better than this. It can still feel how it's got a little bit of grit to it. Now, the problem I've found so far is if I have a look at the roof, you can see where it's been painted and then it's been masked. And you can see that there's clear coats, like mask lines on them. So that's got to be wet sanded off. And also, I just want to go down to that, this side down here. So just feeling along. I can feel that this door's a lot rougher, even though it doesn't visually look too much worse. That's going to need a wet sand. And then we've got the wing that I've done, which you can see is noticeably duller than the other one, than the door, see? You can see my reflection on my hand. So again, that's gonna to need to be wet sanded as well. Now the sandpaper I've got is not very good quality to be honest. So I need to go and order something like this, which is uh, something like McGuire's Unigrit. Now this is a automotive grade sandpaper. So this is going to just give a very even finish when I stick it on the car. And that's really important to do because if I get one that's uneven and it's cheap, it's going to damage the paints work and I'm just going to be battling against myself and creating a lot of work. So it's better to actually buy an expensive one, even though it's like £16 for 25 sheets. But in the long run, it's actually going to be much, much better in terms of how much work I'm going to stick into this car. So I'm going to go ahead and order that. And once that's done, wait for that to arrive. But whilst I'm doing that, because that's mostly on the roof, and the wing i can go ahead and still do stuff like buffing the back of the car up uh, see how that goes and then if that goes well i can fit the spoiler and such and get used to the rest of the car and get that all sorted and then i can do the roof later on because there's no plastics up there or anything so if i have to sound and buff that later that's not gonna be a problem well there you go that's the progress on the 205 at the moment now i know it's not as much stuff as you were hoping it's not as much stuff as i was hoping but that's just the way sometimes with old cars, you run into roadblocks and it just takes your time up. Especially with Christmas and the new year at the moment, if I ordered stuff, it just wasn't gonna come through quickly. So with any luck, stuff like the sandpaper and the track rod ends will come through relatively quickly this week. Also, more importantly for me at the moment is if I can try and source the brackets to the big calipers, that's an important one. And then I can start putting all that stuff together. But if I get the sandpaper done, then I can get all the details finished off on the car and then it should look a lot better. Then I can go ahead and start doing some of the smaller stuff to it, like just putting the wipers in and such and finishing off the plastics and really making this on the outside look complete. Now I'm not gonna do the front end of the car at the moment because if I need access to stuff, it's better doing it without the lights on, without the bumpers. So I'm gonna leave that as one of the last things to do. But I do wanna go ahead and try and get the rest of the car completed off on the outside. And like I said, also try and get down on those wheels because I've got that smashed up three series out there, which I really need to get into the garage and start working on. So because that's my daily driver, well the Volvo is now at the moment because the T-Series is out of commission, but once I get down here I can start working on my daily driver as well and this can then go outside to be finished off. So anyway, thank you all for watching and yes, hopefully next time we'll have more stuff to show you. So until then, if you like this video, you know what to do, like it, if you don't, dislikes, if you loved it, subs, fantastic. So until then, thank you all for watching, see you soon and as always, take care.